your world might be gone, but mine isn't. If you let that tower fall, billions of people die. Do they have guns and bullets in your world? You're gonna like Earth a lot. That was a look at The Dark Tower, the film adaptation of a Stephen King novel. Hit screens this weekend for his take on this and other new movies opening up. Let's bring in Richard Krauss for us this morning. Good morning, Richard. Nice, nice to, to see, see you. you. The Dark Tower. Yeah, Stephen King, eight books, a whole new world. Mm -hmm. He's created this incredibly elaborate uh, fantasy world, which the movie by and large ignores. I mean, they, they, <laughs> they, they've made what they call a sequel to the book. So I think what happened is some poor screenwriter read all the books and said, this is impossible. This is a television <laughs> show, or this is a multi, uh, you know, fasted movie, kind of like Lord of the Rings or something like that. You can't tell this story in one movie. So they've, they've used the characters. I think fans will understand what's going on because the characters are the same, uh, but also newbies to it will also not be lost in what's going on, except that you might get tired because it's kind of dull. This is a, an adaptation of some great source material that doesn't really work all that well. Um, it, it has two main characters, uh, Matthew McConaughey, who is kind of looks disinterested, frankly, in being there. He's got the movie's best lines, but barely uh, sort of delivers them in any kind of interesting way. And then Idris Elba, who should be a giant movie star and isn't yet, and this isn't going to be the one that does it for him. He'll find it. Okay. He'll find it, okay. but this isn't it. So it's All just right. one star for The Dark Tower. Yeah, I'm thinking, why are we spending a whole lot of time on this movie <laughs> if you're only going to give it one star? Uh, the next movie is an inconvenient yeah. sequel. And it, Al Gore is back. He's back. So 10 years after the PowerPoint presentation of An Inconvenient Truth, which won an Academy yeah. Award for Best Documentary, he's back with a follow-up. And, you know, this movie is more of a movie. There's more interviews. There's more footage. It's not just facts and figures. And, and that part is, is quite effective. I mean, you walk away from this movie remembering some of these quite startling images of roads melting in India and anticipatory mass graves being dug in Asia because there's some hot weather coming that they're just not equipped to deal with. And so they're digging graves for the people that will pass away from uh, heat, uh, from the heat. But I didn't feel like there was anything much here that I didn't already know or, or, or have an idea about anyway. And I think that where the first movie really lived at the center of popular culture for quite a long time and kick-started this eco-movement, or certainly mainstreamed this eco-movement, um, I don't think this movie will have the same effect because it is kind of more the same. Uh, and Al Gore... As passionate as he can be, it, it sometimes can be, frankly, a bit of a windbag uh, sometimes talking about this. And so it's a two and a half out of five star movie for me because it didn't set those, it, it didn't uh, light a fire under me in the way that the first movie did. Mr. Gorgeous called. Yeah, I know. He I'm sorry about that. Back. I interviewed okay. him. He was a very nice man. I, was very, very nice. nice. Um, now, this is the one a lot of people yeah. are excited about Detroit. Detroit is the new Catherine Bigelow movie. You know her name as the director of Zero Dark Thirty, of uh, The Hurt Locker. Yep. So you know that she can handle action. She knows how to shoot action. So build this story tension. and build tension. So the story of uh, a little known facet of the 1967 Detroit riots uh, is handled with suspense and, and beautiful filmmaking in terms of all the action that leads up to the Algiers Motel incident. So what happens during the uh, riots that, that broke out in the summer of 1967 uh, a number of people, and we start to meet the characters as the movie goes on. We get the history, and then we start to meet a young musician whose big chance in the spotlight at the Fox Theater is scuttled because uh, there's a riot going on outside. So he's pulled off stage. He grabs him and his band members, and he says, you know, we have to go find somewhere safe to go. Let's go to the Algiers Motel. There's nothing happening there. It's a couple of blocks away from the from the really bad stuff that's happening. Uh, they go there, and, and the Algiers is an oasis of calm in the middle of this chaos. Chaos. People are listening to John Coltrane records. They're cooking food. There's women there. It's an amazing. They're hanging around a pool. And then someone does something stupid. And I won't say 
what it is, but a, a, a stupid but relatively harmless thing happens, and the police think it's a sniper and invade the, the motel. And for the next 45 minutes of this movie, uh, the action and all that stuff that has come before basically stops and it becomes a horror movie as the white police officers interrogate uh, seven or eight uh, young African-American men with psychological games, enhanced interrogation. It is gut-wrenching to watch, and okay. which I think means that it's very successful in terms of what you do. That's obviously what Catherine Bigelow was trying to do here. This is a movie that even though it's 50 years old, you know, everyone's wearing, you know, 1960s clothes, they're listening to 1960s music and that kind of thing. It feels very timely. Okay. Uh, you can't help but think of recent events in the news as you're watching it. So it's a four and a half or four out of five star movie for me. This afternoon matinee. Absolutely. Um, okay, Richard, thank you so much. Do thank we have you. 10 seconds that we can zoom in, please, Laura, on Richard's tie? <laughs> because <laughs> this is fantastic. Well, is it, this a Batman tie? Uh, no, it's not. Well, it's okay. also, it goes with my cufflinks. Pow. That say pow and uh, bam. Perfect. Richard, thank you. <laughs> See you next week. See ya. <laughs>